The Bible helps us understand by telling us the beast is from Babylon. There are this is simply not true. The text does not say that. Many references to Babylon in the book of Revelation. Who is the beast demonic spirit? And when did the beast have power on earth the first time? This is Baal, the god of the Babylonians. So he, he uses an image here, the picture for uh, Baal or Baal. Uh, this is not accurate. This is a picture of the god Molech. Um, and you can look it up on the internet. It was, then was not while confined, and then it was again when released from the abyss. Prophet Isaiah in chapter 14 describes the destruction of Babylon. This prophecy was fulfilled when the Persians invaded Babylon and the Babylonians were defeated by Cyrus. But by the way, this screenshot is, is not depicting Cyrus the Great entering Babylon. This is actually from the Hollywood movie on Alexander the Great. So, just want to throw that out there. The Bible refers to the Babylonian demon as Bel or Baal. Bel is Aramaic and Baal. Again, this is ironic because in Daniel 7, the Baal imagery is used uh, by the author and applied to the Son of Man. The Babylonian demon confined in Sheol did not have earthly power during the time of the Apostle John in 95 AD. Since it was trapped in Sheol at that time, this is why John said, Now is not. No, he said that because the Emperor Nero literally was not. He had died in the 60s, 30 years before. Depending on whenever Revelation was written, there's different dates given by scholars, but generally towards the end of the first century is considered the, uh, the most likely date. Uh, Nero died in the 60s, so he was not. But again, there was a persistent belief among the Romans that he would return. This is what the author of Revelation is referring to. In Revelation chapter 9, we learn an angel looking like a star fell to earth and was allowed to open the abyss. Bell was released from the abyss. So wait a second. Is the abyss literally on the earth? Is this some kind of uh, pit that we can actually physically see? If, if so, then why has it not been found yet? This is like similar to the myth in Genesis that the Garden of Eden was on earth and was guarded by angels with fiery swords. Well, how come this has never been found? These are just myths. All right, the Garden of Eden is not on earth. It never was. The abyss is not on earth. It never was. All right, um, this is, we're talking about a different realm. So to, the idea that a star fell from heaven and opened up the abyss is complete nonsense. And, and when was this? When does this, did this star, which I assume was a meteor or an asteroid, crash to Earth? There's been many asteroid collisions with Earth, one of the biggest ones uh, in the Yucatan Peninsula, which uh, it is thought killed off the dinosaurs. So when did this happen? Where is the evidence for this? The, the narrator does not mention this in the video. I wonder why. And took his throne in the Kaaba. So many demons were released that it looked like smoke. One of the demonic spirits was revealed to Muhammad and gave him the false gospel of the Quran. So this is, again, no evidence for this, first of all. Just imaginative you know, storytelling. But let's consider this. Why would a demon approach a 7th century Arab merchant nobody of any, any significance at the time and tell him uh, uh, that God is sending you as a messenger to your idolatrous people, all right, idol worshippers, to preach to them the belief in one God. Just think about this for a second. Does that make any sense? Why would a demon, Satan, whoever it was, decide to start a new religion 
in one of the most obscure, out-of-the-way places in the world? Why wouldn't he have started this religion somewhere else? In the Byzantine Empire, for example. Some of the more uh, advanced nations of the world. Why start it in a backward desert tribe? And why start it by preaching monotheism? Why start it by preaching against idolatry? All right? In the Bible it says that Satan divided against himself cannot stand. All right? So why would these demons preach against idolatry, which is what they're actually uh, always encouraging? And why would they con uh, why would they send in the Quran the the condemnation of Satan of the devil? Christians come up with these crackpot theories, and they make themselves look like idiots. So let's compare. We have Paul, and we have Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Paul has an alleged vision of Jesus where the alleged Jesus tells him that he is his chosen instrument. And Paul preaches about the worship of Jesus. So he worships Jesus as God. Compare that to Muhammad, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, who said, no to idolatry, don't worship men, don't worship any of the creation, worship only God who has no image. He completely destroyed idolatry in Arabia. So which one is more likely to have been misled by Satan? Him? Or him? The answer is pretty obvious. Again, Christians, think about this. Without your bias, this is an important question. You've been misled. You've been deceived. Please think about this with an open mind, free of your bias and stupidity. This occurred between 610 and 632 when Muhammad received a false gospel through many visits from a demonic spirit calling itself Gabriel. This is again ironic because uh, if you've read the book of Daniel, it's Gabriel who, who allegedly shows up and explains the visions to Daniel. And one of the visions again is in Daniel 7 where uh, uh, Daniel sees the elderly deity Yahweh with white hair sitting on a throne with flaming wheels. The, uh, this, this image is used in pagan uh, artifacts. There are striking resemblances between the biblical god of the patriarchs and the Canaanite god El. El is the head of the Council of Gods. He is said to have a long white beard. He dwells on a mountain top in a tent. His epithets include father of all creatures, bull, king. He is also described as the protector of patriarchs, patriarchal figures, a god of the father of the clan, it says in the text. He guides them. He protects them. He promises them descendants. Many biblical passages depict God exactly this way. Also, the Son of Man being described as in the same language as Baal, the storm god. Satan wants to be God and deceive Muhammad into worshiping him. Uh, wouldn't it have been better for Satan to deceive Muhammad into worshiping the pagan idols? Wouldn't that have made more sense? Uh, Prophet Muhammad actually hated the idolatry of his people, and that's why he would oftentimes ret retreat into uh, the cave of Hira 
to meditate there, he actually never took part in any of the, the pagan worship. So if Satan wanted to trick him and deceive him, this would be the perfect way to do it. Come to him and, and pretend to be one of the pagan gods. So the theory that the Christians come up with about Islam is complete nonsense. And again, I keep saying it, please think for five seconds before making these crackpot claims. Seek Allah's help through patience and prayer. And indeed, it is difficult except for the humbly submissive to Allah. Alhamdulillah, inshallah. Uh, all people should seek Allah's help.